the next entry in the DCEU, that is the Detective Comics Extended Universe to the layman, um, is a, in the form of a James Gunn TV show, which honestly I did not expect. I think I heard the announcement in like... November, maybe? I don't even remember when I was aware that this project was happening. I didn't watch a trailer. I didn't, like... I didn't even really want to watch the show. Not because I didn't like The Suicide Squad. I thought The Suicide Squad was freaking awesome. And I did love Peacemaker in the in, in the movie. I was just like, why are they making a show? Is it going to be connected to the DCU in any way? I don't know. And I was like, ah, I guess I'll just check out the first episode. And I'll probably not want to watch it from then on. Um, but when I tell you that I was hooked from the second the title card started... Um, I really mean that. I've never seen a show where I've been that hooked from the very beginning before. I'm trying to think of any, and I, I can't think of one. But today we're talking about Peacemaker, season one. Peacemaker season one was released in 2022, and uh, it's a James Gunn project. Okay, I normally don't attribute, you know, writers or directors to shows because they do interchange a lot. But James Gunn did write every episode, and he directed I think six of them, maybe five. Um, there's eight episodes, and they're all on HBO Max. If you wanted to check it out, uh, you can go to HBO Max. Um, I think they do have a thing going on right now where you can sign up and get um, like seven days free. So consider doing that. Not sponsored or anything. I just I really like HBO Max. HBO Max. If you're watching this and you want to like sponsor me, you can like toss me five bucks, and I'll you know I'll talk about you for a little bit. But um, yes, it is on HBO Max. There will be there will be spoilers in this video. I always forget that that's going to happen. When I talk about shows, I talk about spoilers. I got my pen. Um, I have another pen. Um, I talk about spoilers, and it's more of a relaxed video when I talk about shows, uh, just because there's a lot to talk about, and I feel like there's no reason to talk about things that everyone knows. So I'm going to talk about my opinions on what everyone already knows. So I'm assuming you've already seen the show. If you haven't, why are you watching my video? Subscribe. Go watch Peacemaker, and then come back because wait, watching my videos is a waste of time if you can be watching Peacemaker. That's just a fact. Uh, that's how good Peacemaker is. When I tell you about that, I was surprised by this show. I was surprised by this show. I did not at all anticipate this being like something I cared about and was like actually emotionally connected to. I just thought it would be this weird show that kind of, you know, was a little weird and, and kind of sketchy and didn't really have a linear plot. I was very wrong, very incorrect. Um, this show is freaking awesome. I guess I'll summarize the, pro the plot in, in very generic ways in case you haven't seen it and you're still watching this video and not watching Peacemaker. Um, Peacemaker, following the Suicide Squad, gets out of the hospital after his end credit scene from the Suicide Squad, and he basically gets roped into this plot with uh, this group of people, and they are looking at the butterfly thing. There's a butterfly project, that's what they're calling it, um, where these little alien bugs have infiltrated human population and it's up to them to destroy them and kill them all before they take over the world essentially or so they think it's a little bit more complicated than that i'm not going to get into too many details about it because you already know if you've seen the show and if you haven't you should watch the show um i want to talk a lot about the characters because this is a character driven show which i cannot believe i was going to say because i did not think it was going to be a character driven show and what i mean by character driven shows is that the plot revolves around what the character Characters do that characters don't revolve around the plot which is a problem for most TV shows nowadays is that most of the time it is a plot driven show which is fine I think a lot of people do like plot driven shows they're easy to watch but character driven shows are way more fun because you're like ah but like you're you know peacemakers in this really big thing but what if he just kind of shoots everyone and he kills everyone because that's what he would do in this situation and then he does and you're like ah cool so the payoff in every episode is great there's always great payoff because you know what's going to happen but you're not sure as to like how it's going to happen you're like i know they're going to defeat this guy but like i didn't expect john cena to be like jumping from balcony to balcony landing on his face every time um and it's great the show for starters is freaking hilarious it, there is not a single episode where i haven't like busted a gut laughing at this thing i mean it is funny as hell um from start to finish. The the opening title credits with the dance is fantastic. Uh, there are moments where it opens and you feel sad. Particularly, I think it was episode 7. Uh, that it opens right after John Cena's crying his eyes out. Um, it's just him literally bawling. And then, do you really want to, do you really want to taste that? I was like, whoa. Like, I wasn't expecting that at all. And it made, it, it made the, the sequence 
sad. Like, it made it actually sad, which was really crazy, because in the first episode, I'm tearing up with laughter, and in this one, I'm like, oh my god, Peacemaker's so sad. Uh, so I thought that was really cool and really genius uh, use of title credits, because no one ever has had title credits that good. Um, like, we compare it to another show that just came out recently, uh, Euphoria. I mean, I guess it's not recent, but it's more recent. It's the most recent show that I've seen. Um, Euphoria has a great title credit. Um, they use it sparingly. They use it well. They use it at a later point in the episode than almost any other show. But Peacemaker, pretty much almost every time, there's a there's a pretty small scene in the beginning. It's usually something funny that sets up for the, the plot of the show, and then they do the title card that's funny. Except for when it's not funny, then it's very sad, and it's awesome how they can balance that. Let's talk about some of the characters, starting with John Cena as Peacemaker. I mean, it's freaking brilliant. There, even in the first, in the Suicide Squad movie, there, there are moments when you can see the consequences of his actions kind of hitting him in the face. He's like, I'll do anything for peace. I don't care how many men, women, or children I need to kill to, to get it, you know? Um, but here, it's he can't say that anymore. He's, he realizes he doesn't want to kill children for no reason. He will, but he doesn't want to. Um, he, this is one great part in, uh, I think it's like episode three or four, I think maybe it's four, um, when he's supposed to kill the Goff family, and he's like, I'm not going to kill this father in front of these kids. And they're like, no, no, the, the kids are, are butterflies too. You have to kill them too. And he's like, I'm not going to shoot kids unless I know what's going on, because they don't really tell him what's going on for a while, which is mainly, I think, for us, because we don't want to know what's going on the whole time. Um, but I thought that that was a really good balance between, like, you know, him being a funny guy and just kind of killing everyone, but also having a serious kind of backstory that kind of makes him feel like Captain America. It's it's really great. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really cool where he's like, I have principles, um, and they're growing per episode. Every single episode, he has more feelings about what he's doing and how he should be doing it and why he's doing it. I think it's really, really great. Uh, one of my other favorite characters, of course, is Freddy uh, Stroma. I think it's pronounced. I don't. I, I my handwriting is awful. Um, as Vigilante, Vigilante is hilarious. He comes in, I think, in the first episode, and he's just so funny. I want to watch the show just for Vigilante. Um, everything he says is freaking hilarious. He's definitely a me character. Like I'm not a peacemaker. I'm not somebody that can joke in that kind of way. I'm definitely a vigilante where I just kind of dry humor everything. I love that. I was brilliant. It, it was it was hilarious. I loved watching that. Um, and his character is fun, and I honestly, so I know I know he's, um, James Gunn is writing season two for the show, and he's writing another show in the same universe. I hope it's a vigilante show. I just want a vigilante show about him being vigilante and just, like, doing real world shit. Like, just walking around and be like, ah! Like, like I want him to be Spider-Man, but in the DC universe and better. Like, that's what I want. I hope we get a show like that. Just, like, a little episodic fun little like almost a sitcom i want that it'd be great but i like his character a whole lot and of course jennifer holland as harcourt was probably my my, my third favorite character besides eagly eagly is my first favorite character of course um harcourt is great she's she's fun but she's definitely the most serious out of everyone and she just she's badass and i love that I, oh every episode every scene she's in she's like kicking ass and like john cena's like whoa like you're really cool um, so I thought she, she did a really, really good job. I had a great time. I mean, every single character is so good. Out of bio is great. I do think they, they kind of um, rushed her character in the last episode because they were like, oh, no, her arc's not complete. We only have this last episode to finish it. Um, and they did finish it on a pretty good high note, um, but it did take some time to get there. Uh, I feel like the first six or seven episodes, she doesn't change at all until, like, literally the last episode where they're like, oh, we haven't finished her arc. We should do that. Um, I don't really care that much because I was focused on just the story um, at that point, but I did notice it was a tangible feeling. I was like, ah, they kind of rushed that there, didn't they? Same with uh, Economos. Uh, they rushed it towards the end a little bit. But I, I feel like his character rushed less than Adebayo's character. I do like Goff as a character. Goff is a great character. I, we might see him again in the future. That'd be pretty cool. I love his dad, of course. Uh, Peacemaker's dad is freaking cool as hell uh, and scary, too. I thought that was really, really cool how they kind of made a little scary i was like whoa and of course you know all of the bugs uh, the butterflies are awesome the cow is sick as hell um and then of course spoiler alert um in the last episode when the justice league shows up I, when they first showed up you just see their silhouettes and i'm like okay they're just gonna have the silhouettes and they're gonna fly away or whatever but then they actually showed jason momoa and uh the flash and i was like no way they got ezra miller this to do it. my guess is they were filming nearby 
for their own movies because they have The Flash and they have Aquaman 2 coming out. My theory is that they were just working on their own movies and James Gunn was like, yo, can I borrow them for just five minutes? Um, I do think Wonder Woman and I do think Superman were both just su silhouettes from previous movies because uh, we didn't see them really in detail. We didn't hear them talk or anything. And Cyborg was not there. I, I would imagine because Cyborg isn't going to be canon anymore. Um, they're kind of deleting Cyborg from existence because the actor doesn't want to do it, which fair enough, I guess, but it was a little weird to not see him there. But anyway, uh, I want to wrap this up because it's, it's uh, been a while. It's a long video. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's a brilliant show. I cannot wait for season two. This is my most highly anticipated show ever. I can't wait till season two. I'm so excited. This is better than anything Marvel's done in quite a while um and i truly mean that i think marvel needs to set, set, step up their their you know their game when it comes to their shows a lot of their shows are good but not great a lot of their shows start off really strong and then just decline in the last episode and this one i didn't feel that this one felt just freaking awesome pretty much the entire time um, i recommend this to anyone who saw the suicide squad and liked it anyone who wants more james gunn content please watch this show. I'm super excited. Uh, I am finishing Euphoria Season 2 as it progresses, and uh, there's a show called uh, Our Flag Means Death, I think, something like that. It's a Taika Waititi show uh, about Blackbeard. <laughs> um, that comes out starting uh, March 3rd on HBO Max, so definitely check that out. I will be watching that as it comes out, so if you want to watch along with me, consider doing so. But I'm going to go ahead and give Peacemaker Season 1 an A+. Have you guys seen this season of Peacemaker? Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about it. I just, I love it so much, and I hope you guys do too. Um, but if there's anything wrong with the show, like, what did you not like about the show? That's what I want to know. Put in the comments below what you didn't like about the show. I'm curious to see what everyone thought. So put that in the comments below. And please consider subscribing, because it helps me out a whole lot. So please, please, please consider doing so. And as always, keep watching movies and television. Stay educated. And I'll see you guys in the next video.